yeah. when I when I think about like jazz music and like those guys going over to Europe, um, to like be to to be heard and be accepted, um. And, and you know, especially during during this time, the '40s, '50s, '60s, where like you know, civil rights is is even w maybe. I mean, I don't know if I should say worse, but still very much a problem. Do you think that's true of like you know house music and electro and techno? Hundred percent. I mean, even I was talking to Pete Tong about it the other day, and I've also talked to a lot of you know, like kind of let's say founders of dance music, where even at the beginning they had to leave Chicago and Detroit to go to Europe to uh, really be recognized. It was the same for jazz. I mean, same thing even for James Baldwin having to leave and kind of become a, a writer and then come back, you know? There's always been a more of an acceptance to kind of American black artists, and as Europeans call it, to black music <laughs> in, in Europe. Uh, I always thought that's funny in Europe. They call like all music by black people just black music. Like, oh, just, that's people. just its own, got its own category at the record yeah, shop. Yeah, like going to going to Berlin and you see like an urban night and it's like black music night. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be Jimi Hendrix yeah, it could be and Eddie, Austin, Miles Davis and George you know, Clinton. Be, but that's what they call it, you know? But I, I think they've yeah. all, always been um, really accepting on the idea of black musicians and artists coming over there and I mean one of the reasons I had moved to Europe was the fact that I was just a person rather than like a black person you know mm. um, and that felt very free free to me when I was younger and I think also being a suburban black kid who uh, as Phil had said I like you know faced this like kind of thing of like why don't you speak black or why do you talk white and all this stuff and I was like why can't I just be Seth that was like always a big thing that I was overcoming and like I kind of went to this bohemia in Europe and felt that. But I think now that I'm older, like 35, I mean, my blackness in a, in a way is not something I want to escape. It's something that mm -hmm. I've kind of grown into more and more, you know? And like, I think when you're young and you're trying to figure out yourself, you know, you're just trying to figure out yourself and you don't really take in all the parts of you. I mean, you take them in, but you don't really get into all the parts of yourself. And, you know, and many times I think in the past, I, I think I've known in the past, but now it's like there's almost not not a a, sh a shame. I, I would say that's the wrong word, but like a a willingness in our society to pass right or to give up some of your blackness as like an intellectual black person to to fit more cohesively into society, right? Where like, that you'd have to be less black to be accepted intellectually. No, I mean there's a there's a palatability of of raw blackness. I think that is accepted within society, you mm -hmm. know, and of of who we are as a culture and people. Not that any of those things are bad, you know, but it's just like being an educated black person in America. Like I think often white people like don't look you, at you as a black person <laughs> in a way, you know, or like make comments like, oh, well, you're not black or like other things. And you're just like, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's well, you're not, you're not black until the police want to, want to choke you to death. Until, then you're, then you're, then you're black. The line until this car gets pulled over and I'm the only person who gets harassed or yep. all the word or other right, things. Right. You know? I think that's perfect. something, I mean, that's something that I've been trying to dig into a lot is like white privilege and what that means and it, like how, how, how like difficult it is to, like to be honest with yourself about your privilege. I mean, about you guys as two Jewish guys, right in America, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, there's probably at times where you know you guys had to pass as well and not be like the total. Yeah. The but we're also course. from like you know Brookline and Cambridge, which are very you know yeah. Jewish progressive, progressive communities, yeah. but. uh but sure, I I think the problem is like or like you know, maybe being out in public and people just mistaking you as two normal white guys and then start saying stuff about Jews and then you're like, Whoa. it's happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's happened oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> so, I yeah. guess it's like you know what you know what is a Jew if you're not Jewish? What is it's being black being if black. you're not black? Not black. Like, what exactly. is there like a thing? What is there a woman if you're not a woman? So, right? Exactly. What, 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 so like what? oh a, a woman should be. A, B, a, C. a yeah, Jewish yeah. person should be, yeah. and then here comes, you know, Eli and I playing, you know, uh, you know, house music, playing, playing gospel house music in Berlin, or here comes Seth Troxler, 
yada 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 here comes some comes phil and now like phil wants to go to art school seth wants to you know be bohemian etc etc it doesn't fit into the the preconceived notion of i think any stereotype and no stereotype does right i think all stereotypes are detrimental detrimental that's the point in stereotypes right is to group people together so you can you can put them down and keep them down basically But um, but yeah, that's that's what's going on. I guess I forgot. I forgot. Welcome to back. <laughs> that's exciting. It's great to hear, man. Great to hear that you're yeah. that you're coming back. 